Well, Eric, we are back in the studio. I'm actually excited for this particular series, which we're calling Heroic Moments in History. Well done. I, we were sort of working on that before I, we started. I was started. a little concerned as I was looking at you. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. Uh, could you just give an overview of what do we mean by heroic moments in history? Because there's there are a lot of options here. Yeah, well, I mean, we're coming up with another series, right? And so we want to be creative. And we just did this Christian Biographies series, which was... Uh, the best Christian, the greatest, the greatest. Okay, yes. the greatest Christian biographies where we ranked them according our, to us. Yes, that for is clarity's important. Sake, yes. Yeah, because even though we do think that our opinion, you know, does hold some, you know, a lot of weight, uh, but it was a hard one to land that because even just two people trying to come together on that. But I think we both really liked the list we came up with. And if you missed that series, highly recommend it. Uh, this one's a little different in the sense that we're not ranking something. We're coming up with some heroic moments that have greatly impacted us and sort of just passing them along to you, but with maybe a little greater meat to the bone than would just come with just a sharing a quick moment. In other words, each of these characters that we're going to share, because you sort of need a great man or woman of the faith to be able to carry out one of these heroic moments, because we're not just talking about heroic moments in general. We're talking about heroic moments in the Christian story, in the revelation of Jesus Christ on this earth, which is what really matters for us. Right. And there are millions of options as we were talking. Yeah. It, I mean, it's are, a little difficult. It, there are so many great moments. And so we were trying to compile it within at least a last 150 years or so of just like, yeah. what are some standout thoughts or moments that just have stirred us uh, over the years. Which does not prohibit us from going back further in history. It's just not the focal point of the, each each one has sort of a key character that we chose and then maybe some stories, some heroic moments from their life, uh, some key moments that really impacted us. Right, maybe just even on the, uh, just the beginning here to mention that today we're gonna talk about one character that we did mention in the biography section yeah. or that series. But the rest of them are people that we highly esteem, but we didn't mention it in the greatest biographies. We wanted to purposely choose some other stories and other individuals. Which we highlight. must have decided after we mapped out the, the series <laughs> when, and picked episode one. We sort of liked episode one. We're like, let's just keep that. Even but, though but part of it is we want to cast a vision, too, of this idea of heroism. Yes. Um, do you want to talk through? We were talking about what, what do we mean by heroic moments and talking about heroism and there's a lot of ways that culture can understand heroism. Do you want to flesh out what do we mean by heroism and yeah. just that idea? Well, because for us, the virtue, the Christian virtue of heroism is different than just the soldier's uh, rendition of heroism, which is still very impressive. I mean, I, I love heroisms and, and, and heroism and stories of heroism throughout history. Whether someone's a Christian or not doesn't make any difference in me enjoying the story. But typically it's like courage in the face of danger or obstacle or impossibility and someone rising up uh, and jumping out of their uh, foxhole or their trench and running towards the enemy or running to help someone. And the Christian life is all about whatever this quality that we're calling heroism is, but we wanted to give a definition for it that maybe is a little more specific to the Christian expression of it. Because I think a Christian or a non-Christian can both function in what we call secular heroism. And it's impressive and it's a beautiful thing on earth. And it's a shadow, if you could say, of the kingdom of heaven, you know, that we are made in the image of God. But a Christian has a unique access to what we could call eyesight, that where they can see something that the world around them can't. And so the story that we oftentimes will pull out of the scriptures to enunciate that probably better than any other is Elisha when the Syrian army comes to take him and they're upset with him and they want there. It's, it's basically an, a, an Assyrian, the Syrian army against one guy. He does have a servant. So two guys and the math for this situation is totally lopsided and Elisha has no hope, but Elisha sees something that even his servant at the start of the story doesn't see. He sees not the Syrian army. He sees the mountains surrounding the Syrian army filled with horses and chariots of fire all around. And that is what we're describing as heroism. It's eyesight that sees the reality of God instead of the natural realm and reasons and acts from that sight. 
And so Elisha is just sort of sipping his coffee and totally relaxed, you know, has his newspaper under his arm, and he's thinking about going in and reading the newspaper. Well, why does it matter that there's a Syrian army out there? However, his servant is moved by this and is functioning in normal human manner in the sense that he is terrified. And alas, master, you know, <laughs> we're surrounded. What are we supposed to do? And Elisha basically says, Lord, open my servant's eyes that he would see. And I would say that's almost like the message for all of our seven episodes in this series. Lord, open our eyes that we would see that like these men and women of history that lived with eyes open, we could live with eyes open and truly function as Christian heroes because that's all these men and women were. They weren't special in any other sense. They were just men and women who believed God and did exploits. But those exploits were done because they saw mountains filled with horses and chariots of fire all around. Yeah, I just love that picture. And as we're walking through these next seven episodes, well, this one in six episodes, I, I just, I really love that concept that regardless of what the natural realm was doing, regardless of the physical pressure, regardless of culture, regardless of even the physical realities of one's own body, the, these individuals stood up and believed in their God. There's just his faithfulness his trustworthiness. And so one of the ways that we were defining heroism is just living in light of God's reality. Yeah. So regardless of the natural realm, we are agreeing with and walking in light of the truth of God's reality, knowing that that actually is the greater reality. Yeah. Even though there is a natural realm here, there's a greater spiritual heavenly realm that we are to live according to. Which in its basic essence is faith. Right. That's what faith is. And so it's that's, that's what we as Christians do. That's Hebrews chapter 11. These are the heroes, and we call them heroes of the faith. And so uh, I think this will be fun just for us to navigate through. We have some doozy stories uh, yeah. to share. I'm excited and, to get into yeah. these. One of the things we were talking just in terms of this big picture of <clears throat> heroism was what C.T. Call, Studd called chocolate soldiers. Mm -hmm. And he wrote a little book called Chocolate Soldiers. What's interesting about that concept is that he was using that war metaphor saying, hey, when a Christian goes into battle, they stand strong. They're immovable. I mean, in fact, I, one of his quotes I love is like, if, if someone says that there's a, you know, a line along the way, it's like that would not deter any, but a chocolate soldier, yeah. you know, the ones that would melt in the heat of battle, they're going to hear a line or they're going to hear this danger and they're not going to progress forward. They're going to run. And yet what does a true Christian do? Well, they actually look at the line and they scoff because and as CT Stowe would say, it's like, well, why don't you add in another lion, some bears, you know, some tigers, oh my, you know. <laughs> to make it worth my while. To make while it worth go. my while to even go. <laughs> and so there's something neat about these stories that so inspire faith and so yeah. remind us of God's faithfulness. That even in the midst of the difficulty, even in the midst of the challenges, they had this disposition to say, hey, I, I don't care what the natural says, I'm moving in. Yeah. And so even just that chocolate soldier idea of, when we in, in our generation are facing difficulties and trials and cultural craziness, uh, are we prone to melt? Uh -huh. uh, are we prone to run away? Or are we, are we walking in light of God's reality and standing strong and seeing radical things take place because of our faith in our God? Do you want to bring up the free Burma Rangers? Yeah. Just we, that were, idea? we were talking beforehand because we, as a, as a team, we have a work crew here on campus uh, right now because we're uh, renovating uh, the campus and, uh, some of them hadn't seen Free Burma Rangers. And so we're like, oh. Well, yeah, Which is a movie for those who are listening. Is who a movie, not. <laughs> yeah. It's a strangely named movie. I remember when I first heard about Philip Hartman was like, you need to see this. It's in the theaters like for one day or it left. And I was like, Free Burma Rangers? How good of a movie can it be with that name? Well, it was really powerful. And uh, so we, we were watching that through. But it was, it, as a result, this is very fresh uh, when we're talking about heroism. One of the things that's fascinating about that is they have real footage of a real man dealing with real circumstances that would cause most of us as that are that function with a little more chocolate in our Christianity to melt. And uh, so Dave Eubank is sort of the main character of it. He's the one that started Free Burma Rangers, which was actually in Burma, and he is a ranger, and his goal was to free Burma. And so that's where the, the funny name comes from. But... Uh, there are moments in there where if you stick any normal, natural man in the situation, he's not going to do what Dave Eubank does. And yet Dave Eubank has something that the average man doesn't have, and that is the power of Jesus Christ. And that's what was so pithy and 
uh, pertinent to this conversation is I remember this one moment where he sees this girl that needs to be rescued. And yet it's almost certain death to go in and try and rescue her. And he's thinking, well, God, you obviously don't want me to just die, right? And he begins to feel this very clear communication from God. This is, sort of the, this is the reason you're here. And he gets this grace to go and do the craziest thing, to run into this situation and to rescue this girl is a form of insanity in the natural realm. At the same time, in our lives, we look at it as heroism. We're like, no, because he sees something. He, he has the endorsement of God upon his movements. And whenever you see those mountains sur surrounding you filled with horses and chariots of fire all around, move. Act in accordance with the bigness of your God. And so that was just a fresh reminder recently. That isn't the story we were wanting to use today, but it just you know felt like it should at least be brought up. Yeah, I love that. Well, let's kind of turn our gaze to C.T. Studd, who wrote Chocolate Soldiers. Uh, we, we've used him so many times at, at Ellerslie yeah. for so many great illustrations. And we did bring up his biography in the Greatest Biography uh, series. But we do want to just kind of flesh that out, just even to give an overview of this idea of heroism. Would you quickly talk through just C.T. Studd's crazy life in terms yeah. of going from where he was to this yeah. idea of missionary? Well, I think the quality that we're sort of bringing out with C.T. Studd that fits with the heroism model is what we're calling the unequivocal yes. Whatever God asks, the answer is yes. And some of us would be like, well, you may want to think that through <laughs> before you say yes to that one. But the unequivocal yes is a very biblical concept. In the Old Testament, the priests in their, in their consecration process, in a sense, one of the things that was smeared with blood, they would cut open a, a bull and you know the high priest would smear their right ear, their right thumb, and their right big toe. And that right ear would be symbolic of saying, my ear belongs to you. And why, why does God want an ear? Because that's the place of hearing. That's the place of obedience. So that's where the commands come. And so what a smeared ear is saying is I have an ear for my master. Just like in Revelation, it's like he who has ears, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. Well, we all have ears. Yeah, but do we have smeared ears? Do we have ears that are given to God? Ears that are pierced with an awl? Are we bond servants of the living God? Which means we've already given our yes. We don't evaluate the situation before we say yes. We've already given our yes, which means it's a predecided yes. And that's C.T. Studd. C.T. Studd is one of the wealthiest men in England, one of the most famous men in England, one of the greatest athletes in England. Everything that this guy has in his life is, is going well. It's a sweet deal for this guy. And he finds Jesus. He runs into Jesus and he gives up house and home and he leaves to go over to China. He gives up his athletic career. I mean, he would have been like LeBron James in his generation. He literally says adios to his athletic career, who's a cricket player. And he, he leaves it all behind. And then he gives up his entire fortune, but doesn't tell anyone that he's given up his entire fortune. We're talking millions and millions. Yeah, he was one of the wealthiest yeah. man in, men in England. I mean, who does this? <laughs> and he chooses a harder life. Not just, you know, a, a life without those amenities, but then he chooses one of the, some of the hardest places on earth to go to, some of the hardest people to reach, and living in some of the most hard places to get a night's sleep. And so not only did he give up, but he said yes to a very challenging life and worked and did exploits in and through these decisions to the point where you and I just sort of stand slack jawed when we study his life. We're like, whoa. And it inspires at a very deep level to say, I want what that man has. Yes, I'm a little scared of getting it, but I want it nonetheless. That's so good. One of the things that we just really esteem, especially in terms of these, a heroic moment, uh, which we were discussing beforehand, was just that idea of after he went to China with Hudson Taylor and he went to India. He ends up going back to England because he had gotten all these diseases and his body was just ravished with mm -hmm. just pain and craziness. And he's lying on his deathbed in England and he hears that call of interior Africa that no one can go into interior Africa, survive, but here's all these people who need the gospel. And I, I love that moment in the story where Stud basically just says, all right, well, then I'll go. And when he <laughs> applies to the missions organizations, not a single one of them want to sponsor him, which logically doesn't make sense. He's ready to die. You don't send a missionary when he's <laughs> supposed to be, hey, get some more rest. You can't even function. You can hardly stand there. Aren't you leaning against the wall as you're talking to me? I mean, it's such a crazy, 
I mean, this is literally in the face of the physical challenges of his body, the religious institutions of his day. And yet his statement was, okay, well, if, if no missions organization will send me, well, then I have a missions organization of one and God will send me. And just that, <laughs> just that moment to keep your gaze on Jesus, to get up from your bed and then to go into interior Africa that actually changed the missionary movement. Yeah. And, it, and it's the, the ramifications of just that one decision to say, I'm going to trust and believe God. And we've talked about this before so many times at Ellerslie, just that beautiful picture that God's provision of getting him sick in China and in India actually prepared his body to go into interior Africa where no, what was it three days or three to five days that a yeah. white man could survive. And yet, because he'd already gone through all this challenge, God had been preparing his body. He had this super immune system. Yeah. It's it. just yeah. what a great reality of just yeah. the faithfulness of our God. But just seeing that heroic decision uh, to to stand up in the face of everything to say yes. That's right. Any, any other thoughts just in terms of just what does that mean practically for us today? Well, I think for us, you know, I, I've walked through the exercise many times uh, of considering my right ear, my right thumb, and my right big toe. And it's one of those things where you can submit to God and you can give him the yes, and then it's almost like it hangs out on the table and we look around and we sort of take it back. I don't even know that we do it wittingly always. Sometimes we do, <laughs> but we don't really like God having you know total control, carte blanche access to our life. So we have a tendency to take it back almost like you need to ask for this again. God, I, I lent it to you and now you can ask for it in the future, but right now it's mine. And that's why I think it's important for us as Christians to refresh our consecration to refresh the fact that the high priest, who is not just Aaron, it's Jesus Christ. And we stand before him because we are called to be priests in the temple of God, which is not just our own body, but the church of Jesus Christ. We are called to minister this truth, this life, this glory. And so to submit our right ear unto our high priest and say, no, I have an ear for you. If the spirit of God is going to speak, I want to have the ear that hears it. This control dimension, my right thumb, the great symbol of control in the body. Lord, I freshly give that to you. And this right toe, it's a great symbol of where I'm going in life, the direction I'm heading. Lord, smear that too. I think it's a good exercise for all of us that are just hearing this. It's not easy to just be CT stud, right? To just be like, I'm going to be CT stud. The next CT stud is going to be Eric Ludi. Boy, that would be cool, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be fun? You'd be sitting with the next CT stud oh, right now. Wouldn't wow. that be great? You could brag about that. <laughs> but we have such a high esteem. But what we sometimes you need to break it your esteem apart to say, okay, this is the man who lived in this time period who had these circumstances, and this is the life he chose to live. Right. I can't emulate that. But I can take some of his decisions, some of his character qualities, some of the things that he did, and I can separate that out and say, why is that so impressive to me, God? Can I do that? Well, what is that? Well, we're saying it's the unequivocal yes. It's the smeared ear, the smeared right thumb, and the smeared great toe. Lord, I can do that. Here I am. Send me. Mm, so good. Eric, I love just, as we're wrapping this episode up, I love just to pray for just that very thing in all of our lives. So why don't we just close in prayer? Sounds Absolutely. Good? Uh, Lord, we do love you. Lord, we do pray uh, for that consecration. Lord, I pray that we would not be holding anything back, but that we would be fully given unto Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you would, for all of us who are listening, build us into heroic men and women for this generation, for this hour. So Lord, we just freshly say yes to you. And so Lord, whatever you want to do in and through our lives, Lord, we just want to be in alignment with the reality of what you are wanting to do in this day and age. And Lord, we just want to give you all the praise and the glory for you are worthy. We do love you. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.